And I open up social media, and apparently Jay Williams went as far to call this Duke team soft. This is something that's been kind of lingering around this Duke squad for the last couple of weeks. Nobody wants to outright say it. So Jay, Jay says, I couldn't say what the hell I really wanted to say, but you all know what I was talking about. And here's what, here's the clip. If you're going to pee like a puppy, stay on the porch. Let the big dogs eat. So there's this kind of knock that's been floating around Duke and whether or not they've got that like toughness. If like Coach K would never, and I'm guilty of this. I've actually brought this up too. Like how would Coach K react to some of this stuff? And what's it's, it's weird. Because you you brought it up the other day when you went down their analytics, right? Like you look at Duke's squad. They're now what? They're 19 and five. That's the same record as UNC. They're 10 and three in the conference, one game back of North Carolina, who's 11 and two in the conference. Yet the way we talk about Duke, it's like frustration. And I think that might lead to what you've been saying about the squad is whose team is this? You look at Duke play and you're like, whose is it? I know who it is with Carolina, right? Who's. Who's, whose team is this? Do you have an answer for that? I think it. This I'm starting to get 2012 vibes from them. Okay. And, and if you can't keep your Duke years straight, that was the Austin Rivers year. That was their first dalliance into the one and done, depending on whatever your definition of Kyrie Irving is. But Irving, Austin Rivers wanted to be the man on that team and obviously hit a very famous shot in Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, that team fractured because if you're a freshman and you want to be the man, you better be the effing man. You better be Zion. You better be Bancaro. You better be even Tatum struggled with it because of some injuries. But Austin Rivers was like, okay, some games you see it. And then other games like Seth Curry, the Plumlee brothers, Ryan Kelly, you know, those were all Quinn Cook. Those were all good college players who had kind of paid their dues and were like, like awesome. We think cool, but you're not that guy. And there's some of that going on. Filipowski's confidence, like if you just look at the box score, you wow, he had 21 and 10. He was really good. His confidence t- is somewhere you. else. I've been telling his you. confidence is somewhere else. He's one for six from three. He got to the point in the second half where Mike Marsh was playing off of him mm-hmm. and he would not shoot the basketball. And I'm just sitting here going, <laughs> Holy smokes, dude, you waiting for the invitation? And then his problem is what Filipowski specifically, his problem is look at look at the other side for Duke for Wake. With Carr, how many times did Carr dunk the ball in this game? Uh, he had six, times. He had six field goals. I bet you three of them were dunks. So they speaking of speaking of balls not going in. Uh, I think I forgot what the stat was on layups that they missed. A lot of balls so just rolled off the rim for where Carr, a Delaware transfer, is built like this. Mm-hmm. Yet he has the mentality that I'm going up and I'm throwing this thing in. Mm-hmm. When Filipowski goes to the rim, he doesn't try to dunk the ball. He seeks the contact and then falls under the basket. Yeah, and I'm like. You have to go to the rim, grab the rim, mm-hmm. and protect yourself. Mm-hmm. You're six freaking ten. Yeah. Why are you falling into the third row? And then he that's com- bad. And then he comes out of that like with this. Yeah. His, and it's, his face like, oh, my, like oh, oh, I just, oh, I just, I'm, I got it. Oh man, I just got like hit a in the soccer head. player. It, 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 I'm just like, yeah. And there's been conversations. So there's that. That's there, why I think people will assign soft to him. So I was talking to. But that's uh, not soft. It's just not smart. I was talking to the fellows. You know, the fellas, the fellas, the, the fellas, if you will, because uh, <laughs> they know who they are. They know who they are. A- AP and young uh, Connor, young, young Connor, Marks, the wise man, the yeah. fellas. Okay. Yeah. Rod, the fellas. And, you know, because they're there all the time. Right. And I was I forgot who it was it's like. Yeah, I think actually I want to say it was Beard. He's like, yeah, you know, these are things that you don't see on television. Where John's like trying to have this conversation with Filipowski in a game, like probably about what you're yeah. saying. Just go to the go rim. to the rim. Yes, I don't think soft is the label. Like a couple of weeks ago, or it was last week, Chris Mack on Field of Sixty Eight, that podcast, straight up said like they don't got those dogs in them. It's like Tyler said before, you they they've got talent. I I just I don't think that they that they are dogs. I don't think that they play. Just think about like a a Houston, Um, you know, just the way those guys play and how hard they play. I don't get that when I watch Duke and, you know, having played against them, whether it was when I was an assistant at Wake Forest, head coach at Louisville, I always felt like Duke's intensity was at another level. 
you know, and I'm sure you saw that, you know, Tyler, when you played, and obviously a huge rivalry game, but I, I just, I don't see that type of intensity. Uh, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the makeup of those kids. Um, I think they're talented, but it, until they play with a little bit more intensity for me, I, I don't see them as being a threat uh, to win a national champion. So again, that was Chris Mack on Field of 68 last week talking about, and mind you, these are Duke squads that are winning games. I just gave you the record. They're 19 and five. They're a top 10 team. They're second place in the ACC. And what Chris Mack said what Jay Williams said, I looked at Jay Williams mentions last night and a bunch of Duke fans are on board with what Jay Williams is saying. Like that's a soft group. That's not what coach K would say. When I think now we're romanticizing some of the teams that came out of the coach K era. Okay. You brought up that Austin rivers team as a prime example of it. Shire did the exact thing last night that coach K would do. He's trying to hug up his team. He's trying to love up his team. He's trying to give his team confidence because even though it's 2024, yeah, and most of these guys will just only see things on reels and the snap face and all these other things. And nobody reads the paper and no one's going to go to them. Hey, did you see what coach said in the paper? Mm -hmm. No, but you still have to send a message to your team. And what he's saying after last night is I believe in you yeah. and I want you to believe in yourself because you can be better. Uh, listen, the way that they played last night, they could do couldn't shoot the ball either. No. So Man, Pro that's been a, that's been a problem. I for them, think by the way. Proctor was going through something. I don't know if head. he was throwing the up. I don't know what he was doing, but he was kind of like leaving the bench and he was, yeah. he was out of it. He no, was out of it. He had no points. He, had, he he missed all of his shots. He was no factor in this game. Yeah. He, he and, fell on, he fell on the back of his head. Cause that happened in front of me and he laid on the, he laid on the court for a bit. And that was pretty much a wrap for Tyrus Proctor. And I think last year, what unlocked Duke was Proctor playing at a higher level, lifted Filipowski, lifted lively, and put them in a position where they could pay some things back. I, I don't disagree with what Chris Mack is saying in mm -hmm. terms of intensity. I don't disagree in terms of like some of the parts are there. Time, it's getting late though for Duke to try to put this thing together. Okay. Which is exactly what Kay would have said after last night because he knows. He knows what they have and he knows what they don't have. And for them to be their best, mm -hmm. I, I, Proctor can't be a, a net zero. <laughs> this was a this was a knock on Shire last year that his demeanor called into question a level of intensity for the team sure. and whether or not Duke could get pushed around. And then he lost his shit with what happened at Virginia, and you saw how it went from there. Shouts to I, Brian Kersey, who was there last night. He was, you know, just hell of a night for the officials with Brian Kersey there, by the way. <laughs> I think they just changed another foul to another. I, I think Reed just got his sixth foul that was assessed to him, right? Most random. Just the random shit last Willy night. Willy-nilly. <laughs> so, yet last year, there was a sentiment that was making the rounds about Duke, personality, do they have it, et cetera, which came from the coach. And last night, with the officiating and everything else, Shire kind of snapped. And from that point on, Duke kind of turned it on a little bit there, too, Shire was asked about it after the game. And I thought his response to your point about Coach K kind of loving him up was on point. And I think there's a larger point to be made after this. Just emotional. You know, just emotional. Like, I just, um, I don't think this group, and look, that's on us to prove it. We'll be right there at the end of this thing. I'm just telling you guys. Like, I, I just, I believe in these guys so much. And uh, we've been through a lot in the first two years. Like, this is my first two years, the support of the crowd has been incredible. And this is a key game for us. It was a key moment. And I was fired up because Mark Mitchell made a heck of a play, you know, on the sideline. He had great hands. And, and again, just like I don't expect our guys to be perfect, officiating is never going to be perfect. That has nothing to do with it. So that was John Shire after the game. And that sequence and how we talked about it after the game leads to my larger point about Duke going forward and watching a coach come into his own in real time. Right. We only know the final form of Coach K, not the Coach K who got there and almost got fired and almost got fired. Right. We don't We're know. We're going to play this way. We're only going to play this way. Everyone, you should play zone. So there's this. I feel like John, in our conversations with him, hearing him in post game, watching him coach, is trying to have this very calm demeanor. We're not going to get too high. We're not going to get too low. We're going to be really cool. I'm going to do my breathing techniques, and we're going to find a way to win. I get it. It's a generational shift. Kevin Keats talks about this all the time. 
the things that people over 40 care about and the things that people under 30 care yep. about are different. And he is young. He's yeah. in his 30s. So he's not of the same group as us. Okay. However, there is a direct correlation in two years now of evidence that I've seen. I know it's not a lot of body of work, but I've seen it now two years in a row. When John finally shows a little bit of the, he played for K. He won a championship. He knows he has to get to a particular level as a player. So when I see it happen as a coach, I go, aha, there it is. And maybe the team goes, oh, 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 okay. So uh, calm, cool, even keel is no longer calm, cool, even keel. All right, let's go. Okay. And I think, I think that's, it's, I get why he doesn't want to, but I want to see more of it. Right. I want, cause I get it. He doesn't want to let this thing eat him the way it almost 8k. So I get where he's coming from. And maybe I'm doing way too much, you know, press row psychoanalysis of John Shire, but I don't think it's lost on anybody that when he loses it, the team responds. And I'll be curious to see if maybe they're getting all the stuff. Hey, this guy thinks you're soft. Hey, Jay Williams just went on ESPN and said, you gotta let the big dogs eat. Will that get through the team? We shall see.